Hello everyone, uh, welcome again another episode of uh, Research Fundamentals Talks. We are again with Professor Fikri Abu Zidan and uh, today's topic is about generating research questions. I have a couple questions to ask Professor uh, Abu Zidan. Uh, first of all, uh, Professor, welcome again. Uh, thank, thank you very much for your support to International Emergency Medicine Education Project. Uh, Prof, uh, uh, can you please talk about the importance of generating good research questions? Yeah, you would be surprised, Arif, to see that if you don't have a research question, you, all your research process will be flawed. I look to the research question as the map for a proper research. Because actually, if you look at the similarity between a research study and ex examining a patient or defining, uh, really trying to treat a patient, each patient is actually a research project. People get surprised when I say that. Yes, because what is the, the, the structure of any study? The aim is to know what are you planning to find. The methods, what do you need to do to reach that question or to answer that question? And the, resu the, the, actually, the results is what did you find from your radiological work uh, uh, up and the conclusions What's the diagnosis and I'm, I'm going to, to treat this patient? So in reality, you are doing this mental process in a natural way. Now, if you are not focused in your clinical diagnosis, you can't really make a proper plan. Which, which diagnosis shall I do? If I suspect, shall I do CT scan? Shall I do ultrasound? And accordingly, the research question, formulated word research question, will make the plan for you. So it is very important. And what I see actually in, in, in research questions, reality is more complex. Let's say car accidents kill people. But this can be because they didn't put seat belts, because of speed, because the road was not proper, because there was a rupture in the tire. And so you have to ask yourself, if you say, I want to see whether speed is an important factor for mortality, it's like in a race, in a horse, you know, they cover his eyes. So you are trying to focus on this, so the structure tries to answer this specific question. Can we say the most important part of the research? I, for me, I think the research question is the most important part in any study. I have a paper in Journal of Trauma, if you can go to it. It's actually the first model in the literature using pigs. Uh, as a model for uh, uh, ultrasound training. It was published in Journal of Trauma, I think, 2004. And this took me two months to plan the study. I did the experiment in two days, and I wrote it, and it was almost accepted in three weeks. So that ratio is the real ratio for defining research question. Now, of course, if you are experienced and you are up to date in the literature, and you know, sometimes the questions are so quick. But in principle, that highlights for you how the research question is really very important for any study. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, Prof, uh, in your experience, what are the flaws or misconceptions or maybe uh, the, I mean, the problems you saw about the research questions uh, in some studies or in some you know, papers that you reviewed? Yeah, I think the, 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 the research questions uh, actually, of course, they have to be important. And more important, they should be relevant to what you do. One of the misconceptions young people find is that they think, they think that they should read the literature to generate a novel question. And I have that recently with the emergency residents. residents. I suggested them for, for them to do a study. I discussed with them the question for two maybe two, three hours, and we find the question, and then I noticed that they completely changed the, the question. And they told why did you change the question? They said, we look to the literature, and this is how you answer the question. So the most important thing for any research project is to be important, relevant. And of course, if it's novel, it's a great, but we are working in developing countries. So in developing countries, you don't need really a novel to answer a novel question because you may not have the ability to do it. And actually, the most important factor in any research project is the feasibility. Can I do that or can't I do that? Believe me, I worked in Europe in advanced experimental animal models and they were published in top journals. And my basic studies about occupational injuries in United Arab Emirates 
about uh, the bicycle related injuries in, in United, about the trauma registries, which is type 3 data, were on the first part of the journal because they are important for the community. So don't be under the misconception that if your article is not novel, it's not a good study. No, it can be a very good study, which is, which is impact is to improve your community. So how do we generate this question is from experience. If a question comes to your mind and you can't answer it and you look for the literature and they couldn't answer it, that's the question you should follow to answer. This is my real advice. And this is how I generate the questions. You have to be a thinking person while you are working in real life and generate your research question from your practice. Now, this is called the translation medicine, which is the highest, highest level of research. You, you get the question from the clinical practice, you go back to the answer it experimentally, and you go back and apply it in the real life to solve a specific problem. And this is what we do, for example, let's say we did a study and we found speed is a major component for road traffic death in a country. What's the next step? To apply a procedure to reduce the speed and to reduce the impact by putting, for example, seat belts, by reducing the speed by cameras, and then you can study whether these interventions had made a difference. Other countries have proven that, but for your community, the variables may be different, the, the, the understanding may be different, the cultures may be different, so you have to struggle within your community so that your research improves your community. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Prof. Uh, you already mentioned, but can you please highlight one more time uh, the, the pillars of the good research question? Yeah, I, I think, again, I think the, the, the important research question should be actually relevant to my community. It should be important. And I should actually, if I want to stick to that research question, can I achieve it? Is it feasible? And of course, my advice to you, if you want to do something novel that other people in other countries don't, didn't do it, they try to see something unique in your countries. And I'll give you an example. In 1989, they asked me to give a talk about common bile duct stones in my uh, residency program. And I said, no, I'm not going to do that. I spoke with my support. He said, why? He said, I want to do abdominal tuberculosis because that is unique. And believe me, you become an international expert in an area because no one has abdominal tuberculosis in Europe or so on. So you can select a disease. As I mentioned, the, Arab, the, the research question should be important. It should be relevant to your community. And you, it, the most important also to be feasible. Can you answer it? I mean, I see people really imagining they will do the top thing. They don't have, it's not feasible in their community. Of course, if, if you select topics that are related to your area, you, it will be novel. We publish on tuberculosis, actinomycosis, hydatid disease. Uh, we, we published, uh, I mean, these, uh, these are very specific diseases that are available in our community. So we can give novel things about them. So novelty is important, but it's not the only essential factor that makes you work and research in your in community. Uh, can I ask one extra question, actually? The, what do you think about the simplicity of the question? Yeah. Could, you know, focusing, you know, one simple thing. Yeah. You know, Arif, I see many people having, and, and I'm against that, I'm trained in a school where you have one research question prospective. If you, of course, we have to dif differentiate between prospective studies and uh, registries. Registries are meant to collect data, and then you make post hoc question. It's a, it's a completely different art. You have a lot of huge amount of information like artificial intelligence. But the easiest way to do a proper study is to do a prospective data collection in which you don't lose data. Usually in retrospective studies, you lose up to 30% of the data. In prospective studies, we have the, the experience of getting 98% of the data. And then you are sure of what are you doing. And then I learned from Professor Stin Tiblin with the maximum study, one page protocol. So as short as possible, minimum data set to answer, to answer your question. And having multifactorial design will, will not limit your thinking process. It's most, most effective to do a one research question, collect the data, do parallel studies if you want. But for a specific study, one research question with a specific aim and then answer, make the other question as another study then even the error, your error will be much less and you will learn from your experience. 
Prof, uh, when you were talking actually uh, in this episode and also the previous episode about the Salami publication. Yes. So, uh, uh, of course, in the databases are huge and there are multiple variables in that database. Excellent. And uh, there may be various questions can be created from that database to yes. reach some kind of result. Yes. Uh, uh, the, could you please, you know, for, uh, the explain a little bit, you know, the, the, the I mean, the asking the questions clearly, Excellent. differently, how the young researchers can protect themselves to doing the salami publications or the, the similar? Yeah, even researchers out of there come and ask me, uh, I mean, is this paper a salami of this? And sometimes I told them, please don't do that. It's very simple. You look for the research question, is it the same? And then to assure yourself, is the population the same or not? And the, is the period the same or not? If I see, I, I recently received, uh, interestingly, from three, different, from three different journals, the same institution in Europe, taking each variable as a study. And it's the same patient population, the same research question, which is affecting mortality, the same period. So I look into them and I say, why do they do that? You cannot take each individual variable as a study. It depends if you are studying mortality, you should really study all factors affecting mortality. Now, if you have a database, of course you can have different studies. We did that. We, database means you collect a huge amount of information and then you explore the questions. And then you have to refine the question properly. Take the patients which fit that research question and you should be explicit to the editor. Now, if I have, I, I can give you a question, uh, an example. We were doing a study on, on camera-related injuries, and we reported initially the camel bites, and then we studied the whole uh, camera-related injuries. Now, as a rule, even if you want to study the same topic, you have to have at least to double the subjects. So this is acceptable. Let's say you did 50 subjects, 50 people in a study, and then you want to increase your power, you have to write to the editor. We have done this study before. This study is exactly the same, and the, the subjects are at least double the previous one. And then the editor decides. And you, can, you should write that within the methods. I mean, it is all about honesty, transparency, and being explicit in what you do, so everyone is happy. People will feel you are honest, and the editors are usually supportive. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. It's another, you know, excellent session about, you know, fundamentals of research. Thank you very much.